We've seen it time and again. Artists like Axe, who rose to fame and somehow lost their touch with their day one crew. Fame and money can change many people, but with these rappers, it's a whole different ballgame. Let's look at recent rappers who made it big in the music industry, but left their friends behind. Lil Pump and Smoke Perp. These rappers gained popularity on SoundCloud back in 2017. However, this person, Lil Ominous, was close to them since their childhood. Ominous was like family to Pump and pretty much a mentor to Smoke Perp. He helped shape their music in the early days. As Pump and Smoke Perp started getting famous, things changed. Ominous noticed they were hanging out with new people, not the realest crowd, you know, and they were getting into stuff that Ominous wasn't cool with. Eventually, Pump and Smoke Perp just cut ties with Ominous. Smoke Perp even threw some shade at him in public. Ominous tried to keep it cool, wished them the best, but deep down, he felt stabbed in the back. Back then, we was all brothers. We would go to the studio, we'll smoke every day, no matter what, like... We'll make that shit happen. We'll fucking go to parties. We'll go to events together. We'll, go to, we'll fucking put in work together. I'll fucking show Smoke Perp a couple things on, on FL Studio. I'll show Lil Pump. He, he wanted to learn how to produce and shit. So I kind of showed him a little bit. But uh, with time, he kind of just said, fuck that shit. And, you know, it's, it's it just, is, yeah. it is what it is. Shit happens and they don't rock with me no more. But... At the end of the day, like, I did hella shit for them, and they know that. Later, Ominous dropped some more info. He was supposed to roll with Pump to a gig, but got snubbed. Dude even bought his own ticket just to support Pump. Ominous saw how Pump's ego was blowing up and changing him. He tried to patch things up, but had to face the facts. He started speaking out against how fake the music industry can be, and how hurt he was by Pump and Smoke Perp's betrayal. And things just got worse from there. I mean, he, he had hit me up t telling me he, he came to LA and shit. He said he wanted to fight. But like, I told him, I was like, yo, call me. Yeah, like, let, let's yeah, like, 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 link up. And he ain't, ain't want to link up and none of that shit. Okay. okay. Ominous got vocal about it, saying Pump and Smoke Perp used him for fame. This kind of drama took over his own music career. He expected Pump and Smoke Perp to be more mature, but they blew up fast and young, so maybe that was asking too much. Now let's discuss YBN Namir and how fame can change your social circle. Back in the day, Namir rolled deep with YBN crew, including his main man, Almighty J. They were tight, dropping beats and rising up together. But when Namir's track started blowing up, things shifted. He was getting mad attention, and that solo spotlight meant less time with his crew, especially J, who used to be like his brother in this rap game. The chances of him signing a contract to fight me in the ring is probably slim to none right about now. Really? I think he's scared of me. And two, like, why not just make money to fight me, bro, in front of everybody? Right. I think that's something everybody want to see. He already went on Instagram and said he beat my ass, right? Right, I saw that. He said he slept you. Yeah. On Valley Grave. Why are you saying you beat me up on a butt? What happened? I beat the shit out of you on the butt. He was talking about killing me. So why not do it in front of everybody? Like, you just let everybody know. You just told everybody you beat me up. Mm. So why not just do it in front of everybody? For millions of dollars. For for a bag, bro. What's up? As Namir's name got bigger, Jay felt like he was getting left in the dust. They used to share the stage too, but now Namir was all about that solo life. Jay was upset and expressed his feelings openly on social media. He was hurt, feeling like Namir was fading from their brotherhood because of the fame. Namir, meanwhile, was all caught up in his rising star status. His focus was on his own career now, putting a gap between him and his day ones, including Jay. The relationship got so messed up, they started beefing about having a boxing match, though that never went down. Two? I want to get in the ring, I don't want to box. I'm going to put you in that blender like how listen, I did last I want to, okay. I want to, listen. You know what happened last listen, time, Listen, it sound good, it sound good. Let's do it in front it of everybody. It sound good, nigga, it sound good to me. Let's do it in front of everybody, I'm with it. Do it in front of everybody, bro. You one of them type Come of on, man. You got to do it in front of everybody, though. Listen, you like a brother to me. I ain't no no gangster shit with you, nigga. You know I love you, bro. Let's oh, get, I just want to get a ring and box. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a beat the fuck out of you. Bro. I sound good. Let's get it set up. The shit out you too. Let's set it up. I'm down. Let's get oh, it. Oh, naughty. Or hit me when you at that. Man, man, let's set it up. We're going to set the boxing match up, man. Get the one. I'm with it. Come let's back get out here. We're going to set it up. When you come back out here. <laughs> Weird ass nigga. Fuck is cuz talking about? Set it up, nigga. They gonna do that in front of everybody on NC. They gonna do that. Whip the fuck out you. I'm not against the crib. Niggas gonna beat the shit. 
Yeats saw his Instagram followers increase from 20,000 to hundreds of thousands in just a year. He was all about bringing his crew along for the ride. In his 2021 track, Up To Me, he's like, I got rich with the same gang. But things didn't stay cool for long. Now, Yeats got this fresh way of doing music, you know? He mixes up his own words and his raps, stuff like Twizzy, Lil Geek, and Schmunk It. He picked up this vibe while chilling in New York kind of taking after his dad who was also into making up words. His big break was this track, Sorry About That from his 4L project in 2021. Man, that song went viral, showing off Yeats raw and real style. Now as Yeats fame started climbing, this music director, Cole Bennett, gave him a major boost. Cole produced Yeats music videos for their Lyrical Lemonade channel, and they were hitting millions of views. People were talking, you know. From 2021, Yeats dropped seven albums, getting shoutouts from big names like Drake, The Weeknd, Lil Yachty, and others. His label boss, Zach Bia, called him a visionary artist. Dude's known for his unique flow, lingo, and the world he's created in his music. So, who were Yeats' main dudes? First up, there's September Rich, his right-hand man, and then his day one manager, Lil Nextel. Back in the day, Yeat and September were tight, always together. They even created Yeats' signature move, the Twizzy Handshake. They met online first, then started making music together in LA. They had this track, Trendy Way, and it just exploded, putting them on the map early on. Yeet was big on supporting his squad. He and Lil Nextel set up this label, Twizzy Rich Entertainment, signing September and a couple of producers. They were cranking out hits, pushing Yeet and September's music out there. But you know how it is, things change. Eventually, only one of those producers stuck around. But things got worse. Fans weren't vibing with September, even with Yeet's push. They saw him as just a sidekick. Yeet didn't want to hear that though. He took September on tour trying to hype him up, but the crowd wasn't feeling it. September even got booed at some shows. Yeet and September's friendship started getting strained. Yeet wasn't featuring him in albums anymore, but he was still showing some love, like dropping 20k on a chain for September in 2022. By 2023 though, it was a whole different scene. They were hardly seen together and even stopped following each other on socials. Yeet also cut off Lil Nextel and their label's page like a total ghost. Nextel might not be on board with the latest hip hop trends as you can clearly see here. Yo, do you guys like when rappers cosplay as demon hunters? I fuck with that shit. I think I'm gonna start wearing cowboy hats and like I'm gonna wear all black contact with skinny jeans but I'm gonna fight aliens in a tank and I'm gonna like have a demon angels surrounding me. But I don't know, I don't know. What do I know, right? I don't know anything. In September, well, he had his own troubles. Some shady deals and legal stuff. Lil Nextel, who had been with Yeet since the start, felt betrayed. Did Yeet ditch his day ones? That's the question. He's been keeping mum about the whole thing, leaving us all wondering what's up. Now let me tell you a tale about how easy it is to lose your homies when fame hits. Destroy Lonely, this rapper, got big after joining Playboy Cardi's label, Opium, in 2020. But before all that, he was tight with his buddy Nez Lone. They even showed up together in a Ray Shremmer before the fame video. Everyone's wondering, did Lonely leave his day one behind when he got famous? So, Lonely and Nez, they go way back like way back to when they were just kids. Nez moved into Lonely's neighborhood, and they first met at a local cookout. Next thing you know, they spot each other at school and find out they're neighbors. And that's how they kicked off their friendship. They got close real quick. They chill at Nez's place, where they had this legit studio setup, and Nez's brother, Big Smoke Chapo, was also into rapping, so they'd all make music together. At first, they didn't take Lonely seriously as a rapper, but dude was all in, determined to make it. So I'm here with Destroy Lonely. Alright, so the question for today, how much does your fit cost? I don't know, probably like a couple thousand. I don't really pay attention. I just got these shorts this morning. They are. These was like, I think these was like 600. My okay. jeans was like 15. Rick on shirt, couple hundred. Then I had on the Balenciaga jacket, that shit was like 2,000. Some light, some light, some light. That's fire. And what could you say? You got any upcoming projects you could say? Hell yeah, no stylists on the fucking way. That shit's coming out. Hey, that's fire. No bet. Hey, appreciate it, man. For sure. Lonely would be at Nez's house every day after school, laying down tracks. He was thankful to Nez and his bro for showing him the ropes and helping him level up his music game. Lonely even joined Big Smoke Chapo's crew, addicted to money. They were cranking out tunes left and right, even dropped an EP called Destroy Nez. Man, they were so wild with their music video that they got booted from school. But then things got twisty. When Lonely signed with Opium, Cardi's label, his life changed. He and Nez were still boys, but they weren't hanging out like before. Fans noticed and kept bugging Nez about Lonely, which started to get on his nerves. 
Come mid-2023, Nez expressed his emotions, stated he wanted respect and explaining why he and Lonely weren't often seen together. He felt like he was just in Lonely shadow after the dude blew up. He doesn't even mention him now. With my dad being a rapper, I was really into like real hip hop and shit. Yeah. So when I was younger, he had me on like, I was listening to like Wayne, 2 Chainz, like Titty Boy shit like that, yeah. like real rap shit. And then when I started listening to music by myself and shit, Eminem too, I fought with Eminem. Marshall. Okay. When I was doing <laughs> shit, uh, when I was finding music like on YouTube and shit, I uh, started finding like Tyler the Creator, Earl Sweatshirt, people like that. Our future really turned me up with the rap shit. Like, and then from there, like, I started listening to like Future yeah. and Thug and shit, you know what I'm saying? But I was real inspired Monster by like mode. real rap, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what's the real deal? Did Lonely just ditch Nas? It's a tough call. They weren't really beefing or anything. You know, sometimes folks just drift apart when their paths go different ways, you know? All right, this story is about Lil Peep, you know, before he hit the big time. Peep was tight with Lil Tracy and Ghost Boy Click. Him and Tracy, they had this crazy chemistry made almost 30 tracks together. They really shook things up in the music scene. So they linked up in early 2016, right? First day they're together, bam, they create YT and it's a massive hit. Peep had hit up Tracy on Twitter, convinced they could rock the world with their sound. They just clicked, dropping singles and even this project, Castles 2. But as Peep's star started rising, things got tense with Tracy. The media was all about Peep, kinda leaving Tracy in the shadows. And there was this one review, they barely even mentioned Tracy, even though he was all over their joint work. You could feel the strain between them, and Peep's crew, they didn't even help matters either. They were pulling Peep away from Tracy, even moved him out to London and started cutting Tracy out of the picture. Tracy felt like he was being left in the dust, not wanting to be just Peep's sidekick. Dude wanted his own spotlight, you know? Let him know what I'm pulling up in, the youngest flexor, right. man. Ask that! Let me try it out. Let me try it out. You a ho, man. You a ho, stick, man. You let little folk drive. I can't dry it out. You a ho, bitch. You a ho, bitch. You a ho, bitch. You a ho, Fuck you say, Tracy? Come over here, bro. Come here, Tracy. I'm a ho? Fucking punk, man. What's going on, bro? What's up, family? Baby, take down a grown man. Big ass. Let's go, let's get in here. Pump, get your ass in here. Anyways, this whole thing shines a light on how tricky friendships can get in the music biz. Artists start off together, but then fame and other stuff start messing with their vibe. It's a common story in the music world, where success can make or break friendships. Lil Peep and Tracy, they were like family in the rap game, but as Peep's fame blew up, Tracy felt like he was getting the short end of the stick. They were collaborating, but Tracy wasn't receiving the same recognition. Peep never really talked about this imbalance publicly. They were close, man. Peep would even say Tracy was his favorite person, his best friend, but Tracy had his doubts because they hadn't been talking much. Tracy was in the studio when he heard about Peep's passing, and man, he was crushed. He thought maybe things would have been different if he had been with Peep. Now, Tracy's got these tattoos in memory of Peep and keeps their music alive. People thought Peep ditched Tracy, but it was more about the egos in the industry and fame. Fans saw it like Peep left Tracy behind, but really, they just drifted apart, you know? We see how these artists rose to the top but kind of left their day ones behind. Crazy, right? If you find these stories of music and lost friendships interesting, please like and subscribe.